We have breaking news in one of Court TV's most watched trials, the verdict, in the Johnny Depp defamation case has been finalized. The attorneys for Johnny Depp and Amber Heard faced each other once again this morning in court and were not able to reach a settlement. So cameras were also not allowed inside that Fairfax County, Virginia courtroom. And Depp, as we know, took his ex-wife Amber to court last month on claims that she defamed him in a Washington Post op-ed article she wrote back in 2018 where she referred to herself as a sexual abuse survivor. Well, after six weeks of testimony, the seven-person jury returned a verdict mostly in Depp's favor, awarding him more than $10 million in damages. They also awarded her $2 million in her countersuit against Depp. Now, earlier this month, I sat down with Depp's attorney, Benjamin Chu, to talk about the verdict and the difficult decision Depp made when bringing this case forward. Let's talk about Johnny. He wasn't there in the courtroom during the reading of the verdict. Should he have been there? He wanted to be there, uh, but he had a prior commitment with Jeff Beck, who is a close friend of his, to play in England. So he was he was torn. But he made very clear in a statement, which you probably saw, that he this that he had profound respect for the court and for the jury and for all of you who spent so much time there in Fairfax County. So his not being there was in no way intended to be disrespectful, to the contrary. Right, and how did he find out being across the pond? I believe that he was in a pub watching it. And we weren't, obviously we couldn't share that moment with him, but we did FaceTime him and he, he looked like the weight of the world was off of his shoulders. And it, yeah. Tell us more about his reaction, and I see you becoming emotional. You became emotional during closings, too. Yeah. I mean, his life was on the line, so we felt very strongly, and we felt strongly that he did not do anything remotely like this, and we all felt that way, or we wouldn't have been working on it. I mean, he knew when he had us file this case that there was going to be embarrassing, humiliating information about his personal life, mm -hmm. and yet he did this anyway and it was because the charge against him he felt was so heinous and something with which his children should not have to live elaine said that this verdict is a huge setback for women uh, thinking about reporting domestic violence would send a message that they cannot win what's your team's response i think that's entirely untrue and mr depp would want people to come forward if they were victims of domestic abuse. So I don't think this is a setback at all for women or men who have been victimized by domestic abuse. And I think this is a, I think this is a victory for truth. At any point, you know, when you're reading through the discovery that you mentioned or the depositions that you're conducting, did you think of asking, Johnny, are you really sure that this is what you want to do? We'd crossed that Rubicon before and we, we knew that there were some unflattering texts. I mean, we never tried to portray Mr. Depp as a saint. He's a man who owns his faults. We didn't want to hide those from the jury. He took ownership of his struggles with alcohol and drugs, and he took ownership of, of texts that were private texts, never intended to be seen by the by the world or by Miss Heard in, in no way. Um, but he, he really took accountability for that and he thought about it very carefully before we filed the complaint. Amber Heard on the stand. Uh, she spent several days. She talked about really horrible allegations. Jury ultimately didn't believe her. Why do you think that is? I don't want to speculate. I think there was a contrast between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard in terms of taking accountability. I think Mr. Depp took accountability and Ms. Heard, there seemed to be very few subjects on which she was willing to make any kind of concessions. And I think there may have been a credibility gap. Still with me, former Judge Brian Eiden and Assistant County Attorney for Polk County, Shannon Archer. Brian, this judgment entered today. A standard procedure, a lot of speculation, though, beforehand that the parties may reach some sort of settlement before this. Does that surprise you that they just entered the final order? No, the post-verdict settlements, in my experience, are relatively rare. And it really is the exception to the rule. Uh, judges, of course, are always 
pleased when parties can work things out themselves, it's less strain on the system because after the trial, of course, there's an appeal which will involve a lot of resources expended by the court system and by the respective lawyers. So judges encourage resolution, but often don't get it. Right, and uh, from what we've been reading, of course, there's no cameras in the courtroom. Uh, Judge asked Karate, uh, very businesslike today, no nonsense, not taking up anything from either side, just wanting to enter this order and move on. And uh, providing that it says there's going to be a 6% uh, per year of interest to the damages. Is that pretty typical what we uh, may see for this, Shannon? Honestly, I don't think I would know the answer to that question. I've never seen a, a settlement quite this high. Um, right. I, I would defer to the other expert on that. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. I don't know the answer either. Brian, do you know the answer? <laughs> uh, the, the interest rate, at least in my jurisdiction, is set by statute. And the interest rate often is tied to something like the prime rate. So as interest rates are increasing nationwide, I would expect interest rates on judgments will likewise rise. But the imposition of interest is commonplace in my experience. Sure, and I know that that Amber Heard team, they vow to appeal uh, this judgment, of course, and they have 30 days from today in order to file that notice. And uh, Shannon, you weren't with us on Court TV during the six weeks of this trial. What is your overall reaction to this uh, mayhem that took place in Virginia? I was there in person, uh, but I, I want to know your thoughts. Well, I would have to personally agree with what Elaine said about the impact and the effect that this is having on um, victims of domestic violence and reporting as a career domestic violence prosecutor, uh, we are already seeing a bit of a chilling effect throughout the courthouse here locally. Uh, people are referring to alleged victims testimony as Amber Heard like. Uh, and so I am, uh, honestly, I'm nervous about how this may impact our juries moving forward and victims coming forward uh, willing to admit and talk about the abuse that they're suffering at home. Wow, that's an interesting perspective from your experience, uh, what you're experiencing as a prosecutor. And uh, bottom line, Amber Heard will have to pay that amount to Johnny Depp over this time. And uh, of course, there's a new headline out, and we've confirmed Camille Vasquez, one of the lead attorneys for Depp, has made headlines again today for this time not only being a stellar attorney as she really rocketed into fame during this case, but for helping save a man while on an airplane. American Airlines, she was on an airplane first class with her bodyguard and then an older gentleman had some issues. She immediately leapt from her seat, helping him, calling a relative to help know what medical aid to render to him. And uh, the bodyguard also helped as well. And so she just continues to rise, Brian, as far as not only her stellar performance, but also just she doesn't have to be in front of a camera to do something good. Did you hear that story? Yes, no, she's, I, uh, she's had a remarkable run and uh, you're at a different level of attorney when you have a bodyguard. I assume that a <laughs> prosecutor, you don't have a bodyguard. I never had a bodyguard in all my years of practicing law. Right, nor do I. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she does. And I believe it's part of, you know, Johnny Depp's team. He, he has his bodyguards that he hires for him. And he um, has provided that for her, given the, the amount of fame that she has garnered over the last several weeks. So uh, great to have a client who will do that for you, right? Um, but let's take a moment and look back, though, at some of those top moments of the Depp v. Her trial. She yelled, she hit, uh, she threw things, she called us names. I definitely support Donnie, 110%. There's not a doubt in my mind. I don't hesitate, I don't wait, I just, in my head, instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs, and I swung at him. That was a first, I'm sorry. I, I, will, I will say, Your Honor, that is the most bizarre deposition. Okay, all right, it's just gonna say, I've just never seen that before. You never believed, Miss Heard, that Mr. Depp had mistreated her. No, never. So we'll come back at 402, okay? It doesn't matter. She's been watching clips of witness testimony. All right, you're excused, ma'am. You can have, you're excused. What do you recall about the photos? Her face was bruised. Did something happen? 
Do you want? I don't think so. So it's fair to say that she has not donated $3.5 million as of today to the ACLU, true? That's true. Right. I do not deck you. I was hitting you. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Blood drips across the floor and around the, the bar. It just went right past my head and smashed behind me. The results of Ms. Hurd's evaluation supported two diagnoses, borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. You text Mr. Bettany, let's burn Amber, three excla exclamation points, right? You see that? I do see that. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't get through to him, I couldn't, I couldn't get up. I say to Amber, as I'm walking up, he hit you? I thought that some human being had actually dropped a uh, <clears throat> grumpy. I was heartbroken. Unforgettable moment.